We've another how-to project in half an hour on Home and Leisure. First time to join Ian Clayton for Former Glory. Hello and welcome to Former Glory, the show that's all about people with a passion for restoring pieces of the past. This time it's the folks who love classic scooters and motorbikes. Let's go! Like a lot of other British seaside resorts, Blackpool is a mecca for scooterists, folk like these who love restoring and riding the two-wheel contraptions that were invented in Italy back in the 1940s. Now, it's not just a hobby, it's a way of life, and I'll be getting my first taste of scooter culture in a moment. I'm sitting on a 1950s model, and this is a 60s, and this is a 70s model. What actually is a scooter, Pete? Well, a scooter is a personal motorcycle, generally classed as a small vehicle, stepped through with fully enclosed bodywork, 8 to 10 inch wheels, and a small engine from 50 to 200 cc. Where did it all begin? Scooters really were the, 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 the cheapest form of transport after the war that they could probably manufacture with the tools and metals that were available. You did have a few British companies that tried to manufacture. BSA made one, Triumph made one, Velocet made one, but they just didn't quite have the, the style, the character, and, and indeed the mechanics yeah. um, that the Italians could produce. At that time, money wasn't um, plentiful, if mm. you wish. It was a, a cheap form of transport, unlike a motorcycle where, you, as Peter said, you can step through, you could wear your best clobber with it. You didn't necessarily have to cover yourself up, you know, you could wear your, your one inch tie and your drain pipes or whatever it was and uh, yeah. get to where you were going cleanly. <laughs> My scooter is Vespa 150 Super, it was made in 1972 and I've had it nearly two years. The best thing about riding scooters is the sense of freedom. Um, there's a really good atmosphere when you go on rallies, the people you go with are like a big happy family. It's, it's brilliant. The worst thing is um, probably falling off or having car drivers who don't appreciate that you're on a little machine and they can knock you off. <laughs> the standard machines were quite slow really, uh, but it didn't take long really for, for, for the youth of the day to realise that with a bit of filing here and a bit of port in there and a bit of polish in here that uh, they could get them actually from sort of 55-ish up to about 75-ish and, uh, and, and still quite reliably. So don't forget, coastal places were an attraction. Yeah. So getting from up north down to Brighton at 50 mile an hour took you some time. It was a good bit quicker at 75. The pleasure once upon a time might have been to jump on it and get to the coast and have a drink and a jolly up. Um, today there's equally as much pleasure as getting into your garage and taking something that's, that's virtually useless uh, and restoring it to, to its former glory. Yeah. 
This actual machine is actually a, a Vespa 50 Special 1983 model. It's actually a 135 Kawasaki conversion kit now, race to engine, um, which is probably capable of about 90 mile an hour. Well, um, the time and effort could be as long as you want, really. A lot of custom scooters nowadays, people say they're just ongoing projects all the time. They're never really actually finished. Um, something like this could take you at least six months to do by the time it's been to various spray places and all your engraving and gold and chrome plating. It can cost you anything really from a thousand pound up to whatever. This actual bike here has had about seven and a half thousand pounds spent it on at the moment. A lot of people want their own identity on their own scooters. There's nothing better than people coming up and taking photos and say, and you know, and look at this and look at that and things that you've actually thought of and have done. Gaining parts for restorations isn't really a problem. Um, there's a lot of people like myself and Pete and other members of the club where we can ring up and we can, you know, have, have you got X, have you got Y, have you got Z? And commonly, if, if the people have been in the game long enough, they have acquired quite a stock themselves. Do you get the same pleasure riding your scooter today as you did back in the 1960s? Definitely, yeah. It's being on the road on a summer day, hearing the sound of a two-stroke scooter, Nothing to beat it, and if you're in a group, the enjoyment is ten times better. Well, these scooters might look fantastic out here on Blackpool's Golden Mile. There's an awful lot of restoration work has to go on to get them into this beautiful condition. If I brought in a Vespa and a Lambretta, both from the 1960s, which would you prefer to work on? Definitely a Lambretta. People nowadays are manufacturing Lambretta parts in abundance. Um, back in the 60s, there were far more Lambrettas on the road than there were Vespers, and they've continued through. Uh, the other thing as well, the Vespers don't last as long as the Lambrettas because of the monocoque chassis, it tends to rust. 30 years in the rain and the salt and everything else in the weather and the atmosphere, and they just rust away. Um, Lambrettas are a tubular spine frame, three inch diameter, and um, it's sort of ooh, eighth of an inch thick. Mm. and it's quite protected by the bodywork, so, you know, they do last a lot longer. What, what bits of it cause you pain? What bits of it do you think, well, I wish I wanted A drive-side oil seal on a Lambretta is a pain, because to do that job, everything's got to come out of the engine. The gearbox side's got to come off, the crankshaft's got to come out, the ignition's got to come off, the barrel and piston's got to come off. It's the one little seal that Lambretta put in the wrong place. I don't know why these manufacturers don't think about these things and try and make them so that they're serviceable and easy to get to. A lot of people don't just want them restoring to the former glory, though. A lot of people want to do fancy things and custom jobs. Yep. But tell me, some, help me with the terminology. What's a, a, a rat? A rat bike? Yeah. <laughs> a rat bike's a bits of bike. It's bits of everything. Um, normally, they're hand-painted. The yeah. owner's not very proud of their machine. Right. You know, they sort of like just get on it and abuse it and use it and just throw it about and they lean it on a wall. You know, they, they generally kick it now and again and batter it. That's a rat bike. OK. And a chop? A chopper? basically is a bare frame. Underneath this unit here is a tubular frame, as I said earlier, and a chopper is uh, a machine that would have extended forks, it would have eight hanger bars, it would have a very low seat, um, a tank between the leg shields and the seat. Um, basically like the Harley Davidson yeah, like yeah, chopper. A mini Harley D, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all chrome plated, side stands on it, bigger carburettors, exhaust systems, you know, made to look a bit fancy, and the guys ride them like this. They look great, they look great. And I'm told that some people even race scooters, and you will know quite a bit about that, don't you? Yeah, I do a bit. <laughs> Just a bit, yeah. Um, yeah, racing's quite popular in this country. Um, I started in 1978 as a progression from the road, and I used to race a 150cc Lambretta in Group 3, as we called it then, and I went on in 1981 to become British champion on a 150 solo. With a tuning mod done to them, or two, or three or four, um, you'll find a solo now, well, the fastest we've had one clocked is 112 mile an hour. This is your before and after selection then? Yep, yep. Here we've got uh, a GP headset, 1971. This was found in an old barn. Right. And as you can see, looking at it, it's well corroded. Yeah. Uh, this component here, after sandblasting, would look something like that. Yeah. That's the same thing? That's exactly the same thing, yeah, but yeah. before and after. It's great. And what we got here, front mudguard? Uh, this front mudguard here is off a G-Reg bike, 71. It could be cleaned up and panel beaten, but it's heavily rusted on the front. 
There is an alternative, obviously, you can use fiberglass components, which are readily available. Uh, there's one here, another front mud guard. What's that over there? Is that a part of a disc brake? Uh, yeah, that's a disc brake. That's uh, something that Lambretta were very, very proud of back in the 60s. Lambretta actually made the very first disc brake. Um, most people think that it was on a motorcycle. It wasn't. It was on a scooter. <laughs> The beauty of it is, to me anyway, it's the love of the machines. I've had them for 27 years and it's been a, a way of life for me and a part of my life. Um, the beauty of it is, is the enjoyment of looking at the machine, working on the machine, keeping it, going out on a summer's day. It's, uh, it's a wonderful experience. I would choose a scooter over a motorbike any day for the cleanliness aspect, for the um, fun aspect, everything. Speed doesn't interest me in that respect, much as I've raced. It's, uh, it's about being cool. It's a way of life, something that I've got in built into me. I will always have a scooter, always. Well, that's it for the moment, but I'll be back in two ticks with motorcycle legend Sammy Miller and his amazing collection of over 200 restored motorbikes and some Harley Davidsons. I'll see you then.